Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari Flashback Classics, a series of short playthroughs of the 150 games that make up Atari Flashback Classics for Nintendo Switch. Today's game is Monte Carlo. This is a 1980 top-down racing game that's built on the same tech as we've seen in Fire Truck, and as we'll see a little bit later in Superbug. Um, this is a seemingly much less well-known game than its two predecessors though. I can't find a lot of information about it online at all really. Uh, and it seems that the actual original machine is quite a rare find today as well. Uh, so the, um, the Arcade Museum website uh, estimates that there's only five working machines out in the world today and two PCBs floating around somewhere. So what happened to this game? I have no idea. I can't, I can't find any information on it. Um, it was particularly noteworthy at the time for having a colour display. So uh, in the original service manual for it, Atari actually specifically highlighted the fact that this game had a colour display rather than the monochrome display seen in a lot of their previous games. 1980 was a time when Atari was starting to put out a lot more colour games, so it wasn't especially unusual in the grand context of things, but for those arcade operators who'd only previously had older Atari games, um, yeah, it was, it was noteworthy enough to include in the service manual. Um, so, this is a top-down racing game. It's a lot of fun, I really like it, so I'm not sure why it's not particularly well known today. So, let's go play Monte Carlo. All right, here we are with Monte Carlo, which I mistakenly called Monaco earlier in this series, so I do apologize for that. Um, but, you know, Monte Carlo, Monaco, meh. Um, so this is one of Atari's early racing games. This is actually one of the later incarnations of Atari's early racing games, if you see what I mean. So this has full color graphics. This has other cars to avoid. And, uh, yeah, all sorts of fun times. And I can't remember what the controls are, so just bear with me a moment while I just go and check that. Uh, so gas pedal is right trigger, shift up is right bumper. All right, let's do it. So like uh, a lot of the other Atari racing games at the time, this doesn't use a sort of um, turning steering system, if that makes sense. What you do is you actually push the direction you want to go and the car will turn towards that direction. So that's how it works with an analog stick anyway. Back in the original arcade you would have had a steering wheel. Um, and the reason it works the way it does on the analog stick is that the, um, the steering wheel wasn't self-centering. Uh, it, it just turned in different directions. And that meant that you just, you just turned it until the car was facing the direction you wanted to go. And that translates to what we have here. So it takes a little bit of getting used to if you're more accustomed to games where you push left and right to actually turn the car. Um, but once you get used to it, it, it from a top-down perspective, it's actually a lot easier than some of those older games. Like if I consider playing stuff like Super Sprint and various home ports of that that demand you to press left and right on the joystick to turn... I find it a lot easier to control this kind of thing. And this is something that uh, all of the racing games in this compilation have in common. So any of the Atari 2600 ones that make use of paddle controls as well work in this way. And as I say, it takes a bit of getting used to, but uh, once you do, yeah, it's nice. Allows for some quite fluid movement and lots of crashing. Now, you'll notice that the colour's inverted a little while back. Uh, that's because I got far enough to get an extended time. Um, oh, God. I just ran right into that, didn't I? Yeah, like um, all of the other Atari racing games from this period, such as Fire Truck, which we've previously seen on this series, um, if you get a certain distance, then you get a bit more time, uh, and th that is sort of the maximum amount of time you have to score points. So, that was the easy track. Let us now have a look at some of the others. So there are eight tracks altogether. There's two easy, two medium, three medium, pick your pun, and three hard. Let's have a look at the first medium one. So the easy one you probably noticed isn't actually a circuit at all. It just keeps going. And in fact, the same is true for a lot of these so they never actually link up with themselves 
they just sort of keep going in a vaguely upwards direction and you reach checkpoints every so often and then they repeat the pattern. So you're not actually doing laps. But you are sort of getting into a rhythm as you progress. So there, see that narrow bit we had there we've seen before. Yep. Well, this one is quite a, quite a bit harder, actually. It doesn't look significantly harder than that first one we were doing, but it, yeah, it is. And as with um, most of Atari's other racing games from this period, you have manual gear shifts in this. There is no option for automatic gear shifts. So you just have to suck it up and get on with it. Although you can kind of use that to your advantage because the gears actually kind of work almost as a speed limiter. So if you're getting into a particularly intricate part of course you can sort of limit yourself to third gear and yes you won't get quite as far but you'll be able to stay in control a lot more easily. But of course pro players like me they switch back and forth and they go in fourth gear as much as possible and then they crash into some trees. Because that's how the pros do it. So yeah, I, I, I really like this game. It's simple, but enjoyable. It's one of those ones that gets kind of hypnotic after a little while. Because you just sort of get into a rhythm of driving around and avoiding the cars. And no! And crashing into walls. Yeah, I, re I really like this. So, let's have a look at track number six, the first of the hard tracks. Oh, yeah. Lots more turns in fast succession there. I think we're actually going slightly faster as well. And those opponents seem like they might be a little bit more aggressive as well. Yeah, that definitely feels faster. Yeah, this is this is fiddly, but it's not impossible. You just gotta keep your focus and maintain control of your car as much as you can. And for me, I, f I find, with this port anyway, what that tends to mean is continually pushing in the direction that I'm going rather than just sort of tapping to change direction. And that way you can always, you've always kind of got a physical feel of which direction you're moving in as well. And that allows you to stay in control a lot more easily. Yeah, I was never a huge fan of top-down races back in the day, but that, looking at these games now, I feel like that was mostly because of my experience with home ports of them and the way the control schemes tended to translate, because I never played a, a, a paddle-controlled racing game. Back in the day, we didn't have any paddles for our Atari 8-bits, and we didn't have an Atari 2600, so they were not a control system I came into contact with. Uh, in fact, I still haven't come into contact with it directly as well. I, I'd love to have a go with some paddles because I think they're a really cool control system. But, um, yeah, what that meant is that any top-down races I tended to play would have that sort of uh, turn and thrust system. It's not turn and thrust, but you know what I mean. Turn and accelerate. Um, and you know how much trouble I have with that control scheme in space games. So... You, yeah, it's exactly the same in uh, racing games as well. Um, and yeah, I, I just find this a, a lot easier. There were a couple of exceptions. I'm thinking there was... Um, I think this game worked like this anyway. We'll have to have to look into it on um, Atari A to Z. Excuse me, at some point. Uh, but there was a game from a company called Adventure International called Rally Speedway. Developed by a guy called... I think it was John Anderson, if I remember correctly. And that was basically... Um, kind of a, a reimagining of this kind of format of racing game. 
and it used a control scheme similar to what we've got here so pushing in the direction you want to go rather than pushing left and right to turn and again if you weren't accustomed to that it took a bit of getting used to but once you did get used to it you could really rip around those tracks at high speed which was good because that game was incredibly fast from what i recall it also had a neat two-player mode it was like kind of like an early micro machines But yeah, I like this game. This is one that I find myself returning to quite a lot on this compilation when I've got a free moment and I just want to quickly play a game and blast out a, a score on something. This is one I find really enjoyable. This is actually the first time I've tried the harder tracks. and They're a fun challenge, actually. I'm enjoying them. Need to remember to get out of first gear, though. Oh no! Not performing too well on this one though. This is the hardest one though, so in my defence. Oh no, time extend on that one. Let's have one more go at that one, see if I can reach the time extend. So I got good rating on that one. Uh, it's a bonus for two... Oh, I was nearly there, I was only ten points off it. Let's have one more try, one more try. And this will be the last one for today. See the constant no I was about to say you see the concentration on my face and then I crashed into a wall so you know evidently I'm not concentrating quite as hard as I could do it's all this talking if you didn't keep coming into my living room and watching me play video games then I'd be able to concentrate a lot better oh wait I, I invited you here I'm grateful for your company, really. Yeah, we're flying now. Out of my... Oh, no! I'm not confident we're going to get our extend, but... Let's see. Just nimbly round the corner onto the grass. 240. Come on, so close. 250. No! Oh! Just sure. One more try. One more. One more. Absolutely, positively the last one this time. You see what I mean, though? This is. It just taunts you and teases you and just thinks, oh, oh, you can probably get it next time. And then you can't because you keep crashing into walls or spinning out because cars are in the way and that sort of thing. In some funny ways, this is actually reminding me very slightly of um, Atari's Atari Lynx game called Checkered Flag. Uh, which was basically a, a pole position clone, but... The reason this game is reminding me quite a bit of Checkered Flag is um, the way that you interact with the other cars. So in Checkered Flag, unlike in Pole Position, where you just explode the moment you even breathe close to another car, um, in Checkered Flag what would happen is that you would spin out if you clipped another car. Uh, both you and the other car would, uh, would spin out. And there was this absolutely beautiful animation of the car spinning around uh, when that happened. And just the way the cars in this are interacting are kind of reminding me of that. So I'm wondering if there was, uh, if it was sort of deliberately designed as a kind of spiritual successor in some ways. Or if it was just designed to be a pole position ripoff, which is a lot more likely. No, we're going to get 250 again. No, 240. I suck. All right, that'll do for today. <laughs> I won't pretend I'm not disappointed, but there we go. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. 
check out atari a to z.wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects, moegamer.net, where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today, and videopackgames.wordpress.com, which aims to catalogue the small but well formed library of the Philips G7000 Video Pack Computer, also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.